Hello, dear friends and members of the former Hypertensive Patients Club. Today, we're covering so-called medications for high blood pressure. The popular line of thinking is that there are drugs for hypertension, and you have to take them and your pressure will stay down. What everyone is wrong about is that taking drugs is therapy, a healing process. In fact, the first thing that needs to be said about any drugs, even about those that are recommended at the end of the video, is that they are by no means therapeutic agents. They are just drugs that temporarily relieve the symptom, that is, they reduce pressure in one way or another. In order to better understand this topic, the most important thing is to get a bit of understanding about the available approaches to blood pressure reduction. Drugs are divided into several groups. The first group, I'll write here, will include the drugs that act on the heart in the first group. What the drugs do is, well here, the heart raised the pressure, the brain instructed the heart, the heart raised the pressure and the pulse, for example, and then you take a drug, for example, beta blockers, there are such drugs, which in turn do what? Well, they up and poisoned the heart muscle a little, and now it cannot pump blood into the blood system at high pace, and that's it, the pressure has dropped. That is, you brought down your pressure at the cost of poisoning your heart muscle. One reservation here, even though you might be happy about getting it down to 120 by 80 or 140 by 85, but keep in mind that daily intake of these drugs will intoxicate your heart muscle. And what that leads to, first of all, is the general intoxication of the whole organism. Because even though biochemists minimized the drug toxicity for the heart, they still poison the muscle, but minimally. Meanwhile, those very drugs are very toxic to the rest of the body, so use them with caution. That is, all the drugs that act on the heart do so at the expense of poisoning the heart muscle. Unfortunately, that's a fact. The second group of drugs are those that act on our blood vessels, small vessels, and by that I mean capillaries. Well, for example, calcium channel blockers belong to this group, that is, they block the calcium channel in the capillaries. And there you have it, complete dystonia of the muscle cells of the capillaries, and the vessels expand. So what is it? It's also poison, a toxic drug that acts on, well, not on the heart, but on the capillaries. That's the way it acts. These drugs are even more toxic. For example, they include Corinfar, or Nifedipine, as it was called before. About 15 years ago it was called Nifedipine, now it's Corinfar. Well, it blocks the channel, the vessels expand, the small capillaries do, the pressure drops in the system, because, well, our capillaries won't maintain the pressure, so it drops. Also, these drugs are dangerous because they can cause vascular collapse. That is, if the dosage is exceeded past a certain threshold, then the pressure will drop sharply, and that might lead to fainting and even an ischemic stroke. These are all well-known medical facts, so competent, experienced doctors, especially those who specialize in hypertension, they don't like the drugs. It's so easy to exceed the required dosage, and that could be lethal. A patient might die. The third group of drugs, these are drugs that act on the brain. on the brain, or rather, on the brain stem. 
Those are the drugs that calm the nervous system. They have a powerful sedation effect, and the pressure gradually decreases. In other words, the emotional background subsides. An example of that could be a person's anxious expectation of an oncoming hypertensive crisis. And that's the positive effect. I'd like to point out the group of drugs that act on the central nervous system, the brain. They're more or less okay, and I use them in my practice, and I subscribe to their efficiency, and I would recommend them. Because those I would not recommend. They're too dangerous and are too harmful. These drugs, the ones that act on the brain with a soothing effect, vary in their different degrees of intensity. There are a few that used to be popular and they're still sometimes administered today. An ambulance team arrives to attend to a hypertensive crisis patient. Before, they used to almost always administer one or two cubic centimeters of relanium intravenously, also known as diazepam. Relanium is a narcotic painkiller. It's actually a narcotic drug. And it comes extremely effectively puts a person in a very good state. Any crisis is immediately stopped by that, absolutely any. That's why it was used by ambulance services before, but since then they started new policies limiting the use of potent drugs, so it's not used as often anymore. Even though it didn't have particular adverse side effects and patients did not get addicted. So it was used by ambulance teams before and it's still used sometimes, and that's the drug for you. In practice, different drugs are used. Well, sedatives, antidepressants can be prescribed, antipsychotics, and there are drugs that also act on the brain, which I will recommend to you a little later. These are drugs of natural origin, that is, they're based on herbal drugs, on biological fluids, etc. Well, here we have these groups of drugs. These are the main groups of drugs that lower blood pressure. Now I will focus on the drugs that I would recommend that are not dangerous. It might sound strange in the 21st century, but I will recommend taking valerian. It might seem that the drug is totally unrelated to the problem and many would never associate the effect with the symptoms. Although here, I can tell you that the great physicians of the past, well, for example, those of the famous school of Tarev, Professor Tarev was well known and respected, he created a school of his own in Moscow. At the first Grad hospital, physicians still follow some of his protocols. And they used to treat hypertension primarily with the natural sedative remedies. Now, there are a lot of good preparations and infusions. There is just a valerian. There is valerian in tablets with magnesium. There is valerian mixed with motherwort. There are all these variants. So I won't dwell on just one of those because it doesn't make sense. Each patient can pick and choose to suit his or her situation. And even more so today. It's very interesting here in Russia, because each region has its own native herbs, including all kinds of sedatives and others. That's why if you live in the Altai territory, for example, you have so many soothing herbs there that they are processed and packaged locally. There are excellent locally grown and produced items there. There are a lot of herbs in the Altai territory and in Adigia and elsewhere. So you just need to choose your preference, a sedative infusion or there are tableted options and so on. To name a few well-known herbs, valerian, motherwort, and thyme. A very good option for your daily hot drink is thyme tea. It greatly reduces emotional stress and accordingly regulates the pressure.
As to what ambulance drugs are used during a crisis that I would recommend as my scheme on how to get yourself out of a crisis, you can find it in another video. That's a separate topic. Well, as for the long-term use of medications, soothing drugs, I'll repeat here, of natural origin, are the way to go. I would really like to give everyone at least one preparation recipe now, one that I personally love and always use, and it never has any side effects. I could say only positive things about it. So, what are the ingredients? We need to use, I'll write it here, one heaped tablespoon of grass motherwort, motherwort, then the valerian grass, no, that's wrong, actually valerian root, pre-ground root, valerian root, here, thyme, Motherwort, valerian root, thyme, and St. John's wort. That's the composition. St. John's wort also has a great vascular, tonic effect, so that you're not so relaxed that you're falling apart like a rag doll. Mix it all, that is four heaped tablespoons of the mix, cover it with a liter of boiling water, and you brew it like you would brew your tea, filter it and store it in your fridge. Take 50 milligrams of this infusion before bed every night. It'll always do you a lot of good. If you're currently following any anti-hypertension regimen, and if you're not following our recommendations yet, and if you're not our ex-patient and you still have high blood pressure, if you use this preparation without any additional measures whatsoever, you'll be able to reduce the dosage of the drugs in these two groups that you've been taking already. They're dangerous and toxic. So feel free to use this preparation even if you don't yet follow our courses. See you again very soon. We have a lot of interesting videos in store for you, and goodbye. Subscribe to our channel and never miss a new video. Click subscribe under this video. Once you clicked it, you are subscribed. Click or tap the bell to receive notifications about our new videos to your email. Click on all to receive all notifications. In the description below, you will find the links to all the projects by Dr. Shoshanin. Dr. Shoshanin's Club for Ex Patients. Dr. Shoshanian's videos. Set up an appointment for a free consultation at the clinic. And stay healthy.